When did you first realize just how special this group was? I think when they called me up and told me I was a part of the team, you know, I realized that uh, I was a part of a group of guys that I had pretty much idolized before I got into the game, uh, having a chance to watch their careers and now to get the opportunity to go spend a summer with them and learn from them and you know, see what their, their habits were and what they did in the summertime was it was the greatest thing. I ever. mean, you've been to plenty of All-Star games before, but this is different. It was totally different. I mean, I've hung out with Michael, but to have Larry there, have Magic there, have Charles there, David, I mean, Patrick, uh, you know, it, it was just fun. You know, I've always competed with these guys between the lines, but to have the opportunity to bond with them and get to know them, uh, it just made it that much more greater for me. So my, my favorite Dream Team stories revolve all around Michael and Magic, because MemJ loved torturing Magic. Yes. Never mind the white and blue game, that was one of them, but playing pool, all this. Can you just tell us a little bit about the, the back and forth between them? Uh, we were always, they were always competitive. I mean, and no matter what, I mean, it, and it didn't just stop when we left the court. I mean, we, we'd go to practice, they, they didn't want to play with each other. They always wanted to be on opposite, <laughs> opposite teams. teams. And then after we leave the court, it's, into the card room, we started gambling and stuff like that. So it was just. There's so gambling in this establishment? No. I mean, we were playing with Monopoly money. Totally, but, uh, totally. It was just, Quarters. you know, those two guys were the driving force, really, to keep our practice and everything going and just keep that camaraderie going because they kept that competitive edge with that East and the West going at each other. And uh, it just. Uh, you know, it was great to see uh, a lot of great superstars really put their egos aside and bring it all together. And, you know, we didn't really, we didn't waste any time bonding. I mean, these, the, the, the group just really wanted to be together. They wanted to play together and just amazingly, we, we, we came together so fast. So, Scotty, it was 25 years ago today. A game versus Croatia. Just because it was today, <laughs> the famous shutdown. <laughs> oh. And I mean shutdown of your teammate, Tony oh. Kukoc. Did he ever forgive you for what you and Michael did to him in that afternoon, that game in Barcelona? You know what? In all fairness to Tony, we uh, took advantage of a very young kid. I think he was 18 or 19 right. at that time. And, you know, we were in our prime. And, uh, you know, I, I think... We had heard so much about Tony, and it was to the point that it was unbelievable for us that he got to prove to us that he's this kind of player. And we pretty much went into that game like <laughs> we we treated him so bad. Yeah. I mean, it was like we well, were Jerry Krause put him in that guard. position. Yeah, yeah, I mean, Jerry it, Krause it was by all touting wrong. him, right? Yeah. yeah. But isn't yeah. that part of the idea, right? That's how you sort of egg everybody on exactly. and put but the recipe I think together. And all in all, like. Tony really learned from this, and yeah. it was an experience for him. But oh, he, it was an he, experience. Yes. <laughs> he, he, he really was to able to grow, it. but he also realized that that's how we competed. You right. know, we played like that no bar. matter who we competed against. It wasn't just pointed or directed towards him. That was the competitive Including fire. Including like against had. each other. Yeah, because exactly. before we go, we have to ask you about the scrimmage, please. Please. Which scrimmage? Me okay. <laughs> and MJ or yeah, the one that we got beat by those young kids. But <laughs> wow. our, our scrimmage is doing the dream team. The scrimmage I mean, is against each other as well. I was I'm always about. playing with Michael and Magic was always against us. I mean, he always wanted to compete against Michael. I mean, that was their thing. It's like the two MJs was always going at it mm -hmm. head to head. And you know, even though Magic was an older player, he was still holding his his own. And you know, Magic has never been a guy that's gonna go point for point with you, but he's gonna make sure that he executes something for his team that's gonna come out on top. Best trash talker on the team? Charles Barkley. Yeah. That was easy. <laughs> Except for the best, the best thing about Barkley was they'd all be down one end going, yeah, no. Championship players only. Oh, yeah. oh, like, go down there with Malone you guys and the other guys. You still yeah. do that to Chuck. Yeah. What do you mean back then? I watch yeah. that happen now all the time. Come oh, on. Part. Please. No, I mean, I, I, the idea, the, the way that team, it just will never be repli replicated. Such a special moment has had such a lasting impact. Ripples among the NBA landscape as we see it today. Team USA today. Just such a big deal. It is. I mean, there will never be another Magic. There will never be another Michael. And, you know. Larry Bird. Be another I mean, those Never guys be another really Scotty Pippen. And with everything going on with Magic Johnson that year too, I know yeah. what a special, yeah. special experience right. that was. Right.